Now, the next thing we need to talk about is something called the form factor of the motherboard. Okay, so there are many different form factors to the motherboard, and it's important that you understand what the various form factors are. Now, some people think of form factor as just strictly size, right? Size and shape of the motherboard. And the reason that people think of it this way is because when you're building a computer, you buy a case, right? And that case has, again, that's the, the box. Well, it's designed to fit certain sized motherboards. And that's actually true. When you're buying a case, you need to understand the form factors of motherboards that can fit into that case. And some cases are universal, where they can handle more than one form factor. Meaning, uh, when you go to put the motherboard in, it's got numerous different screw holes, right, where you can uh, line up the different form factors of motherboard and still get the screws to go through and screw the motherboard in. Uh, and then also, based upon where those different screw holes are, it would make it so that the motherboard lines up with the back of the case so that all of those ports that we were just looking at at the end that are all on the back side of that motherboard so they stick out of the case, they have to line up with the case as well. And again, some cases are a little bit more universal. They just kind of have a a generic opening rather than having holes that fit each particular port. But the one other thing that also is a factor when it comes into form factors, um, I'm not sure if that's pun intended or not there, uh, but anyway, the other factor is the power supply. Okay, Different power supplies use different connectors for the motherboard. And again, we saw one in that picture we were just looking at a moment ago, but Different form factors of motherboard have different types of connectors with the power supply. So this kind of all comes together. Now here on the screen, I have the five most popular current form factors. These also happen to be the form factors that you could be tested on on the A plus certification exam. Okay, so this is no accident. This kind of all lines up. But I want to tell you that these are not the only form factors that exist. Okay, There is another form factor, and, and before I even get into these five, uh, there's one called just simply AT. Okay, So remove the X. right? The first one we have there is standard ATX. Get rid of the X, and you just have a standard AT motherboard. The AT motherboard was one of the absolute original form factors, one of the original motherboards. It was the largest of the form factors, okay? So these AT motherboards were very large, and if you think of uh, some of the old days, uh, you know, depending on how old you are, if you saw computers back in the, oh, I don't know, we'll say late 80s, early 90s, some of the towers were quite large. And we're not talking about big servers, we're talking about just the regular home PCs. Well, those had AT motherboards. Now, the thing that was most distinguishable about the AT motherboard is that it had something called an AT keyboard connector. Now, I don't have a picture for you here, but I will tell you that when we get to a lesson where we look at the various different connectors, I'll show you what this large, round keyboard connector looked like. And that's kind of how you could recognize the AT motherboard. But let's get into the motherboards that we do know about today, or we do work with, I should say, today. Uh, the first one would be your standard ATX. And this is the, the largest of the current motherboards. You can see here that it stands at 12 inches by basically just over 9.5 inches, so 9.6 inches. And I will tell you, it's not that uncommon. Even though this is still a large motherboard, it's not an uncommon motherboard. We still have fairly large tower systems these days, right? The large tower cases. Now, even though we still do see these large tower computers, they're not real popular, right? I mean, these days, people really want to see their computer get smaller and smaller, right? They don't want this big box tying up space on their desk or under their desk, okay? So what happened was is we actually evolved into a variation of the standard ATX that I don't have listed here and you really don't see it anymore. And it was something called the Flex ATX. Okay, and the Flex ATX was actually, I believe it was nine by seven and a half inches. 
Okay, if I remember correctly, uh, and I don't want you to worry too much about it, but there was certain issues and proprietary things about it that made it not as popular. And so what we did was we moved into something called the micro ATX. And the micro ATX is again a very popular motherboard. It is smaller. Uh, you'll see here that uh, although we could argue that the shape is always a rectangle, <laughs> well, actually, I guess technically, uh, the micro ATX moves into a square, right? Because it becomes 9.6 inches by 9.6 inches. All right, but it still has the same layout, the same general design. Uh, one thing you will notice if you even just look at the picture about the micro ATX versus the standard ATX is that you don't have as many slots. Okay, you don't have as much expandability to it. Okay, so there's not necessarily as many things that are going to connect to it. Now, by the same measure, uh, sometimes we can offset the lack of expandability by integrating certain things right onto the motherboard. Okay, so when we talk about some of the different expansion devices, okay, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, an expansion device could be uh, a video card. Well, you remember when we looked at that first motherboard, I mentioned that there were a couple of external ports that were built right on, and those were uh, video ports. Well, very often, that's because there is what's called integrated video, meaning the video card becomes a chip on the motherboard itself. Okay, so uh, that's part of how we eliminated the need for all the extra expansion slots like we needed in the old days. If you look at the standard ATX, and even more so if you saw an original AT motherboard. Okay, an original AT motherboard, <laughs> there'd be very little integrated on it. Now, after the ATX series, we really needed to find a way to, to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so we moved into the ITX series. And so we first had the mini ITX, which is, believe it or not, the largest of the ITX series. Uh, it had a whopping 6.7 inches by 6.7 inches. And if you think that's small, we then moved down to the nano ITX, all the way down at 4.7 by 4.7 inches. And then we got all the way down to this little itty bitty one here, the Pico ITX, which is 3.8 by 2.8 inches. Now these really tiny motherboard form factors are what you might see, because you might be thinking to yourself, where do I use something like that? Where do I use a motherboard that's 3.8 by 2.8 inches? I mean, it's so small. Basically, it's going to be in certain highly specialized devices, maybe like a router, something like that. Now one of the other benefits to some of these really small motherboards, even beyond just the size itself, Right, because you might think to yourself, well, do we really need to get that small? And, and yes, it is true. You do lose certain capabilities when you get down small enough. But one of the benefits that you get is low power consumption. Okay, And that's, that's another big issue in today's world with everything turning into portable devices is we want low power consumption. 